Right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, even if you didn't decide to have me. How oh, okay. <laughs> just welcoming me. Um, as was already said, I'm Stacey Timberland, Director of DEC Planning and Culture All. I've been with Culture All for six years, and before that, I was a classroom teacher. So I taught seventh graders global studies and eighth graders civics. And sometimes I say I'm a recovering middle school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> But the kids were the absolute joy of, of being at middle, the middle level. And uh, I'm starting to make, make change. Right now. And I'm very happy about it. So that's me, Stacy at cultural.org, if you want to get in contact with me. Here's our agenda. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why are we here? So that's a pretty <laughs> ambiguous agenda, but that really is what it is. Um, I want to just check in with you quickly. Um, I know that the American Disabilities Act was passed in 1990. I know that you've done a lot of really good work around the EIAD. So I'd love to know on a scale of one to five, what is your familiarity with DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion, or diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, belonging, or JEDIB, justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, all of that. So just one to five, just give me a high five and do it from yourself so nobody else can see. I used to be a John Carter, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. So let's start with a history of DEI. So DEI, again, is diversity, equity, inclusion. Sometimes we add the A, as we should, for accessibility, B for belonging, um, that J for justice. But this is 1960, pre-civil rights, any laws passed for civil rights, but this is a board of a, of a fertilizer and pharmaceutical company. It's also pretty like women's lit, right? So we're gonna look at um, the 1960s when really people focused on uh, compliance because some laws got passed. 1954 is when schools were desegregated, but there was de facto segregation all over the United States still in 1960. So Equal Pay Act was passed in 63, Title VII, the Civil Rights Act, is, Act of 1964 was, can't discriminate based on race, gender, all those things, right? Um, so you can't discriminate, they discriminate based on age, but people were really focused in companies, not just corporate, but nonprofits on compliance. Okay, we don't wanna get in trouble with the EEOC, we don't wanna break the laws, there are things that we have to do so we don't discriminate. Then we move on to the 1970s through the 90s. I've just got some photos here that I've pulled from the internet about sort of workplaces in these different eras. But 70s through the 90s is really about diversity hiring. Okay, we need, we need to go ahead and hire some people that are different than who have always been here. So they just sort of broadened out the recruiting, but not so intentional. They just put it out in more places, right? This is when we start paying attention to generations too, because gen Generation X is entering the workforce. Any Gen Xers here besides myself? Oh, handful. Good. Nice. Nice. Uh, starts in 1964 to. Oh boy. When does it end? So we've moved from just staying out of trouble, right? And to, um, again, trying to, to get more diverse people in the workplace. And again, paying attention to those generational differences. When we move up to the 2000s, now we're focusing more on um, not just diversity hiring, but um, an intentional recruitment, but also on inclusion, right? So we want to, so now we've got diverse people here, not diverse people because people aren't diverse. We've got a diversity of experiences and backgrounds and identities in our workforce. Let's help people sort of move up because we're still super homogeneous at the top, right? It's only diverse at the bottom. Um, and then millennials come in. Here they are. And again, okay, now we've got boomers plus greatest generation ahead of that, Gen X and millennials. Um, learn about this term called unconscious bias that enters our collective consciousness. And um, employee resource groups, do you have employee resource groups here? Yeah, affinity groups, yeah, one. So Xerox was really kind of the forerunner of having ERGs and they had a pride one 
in the 70s, so LGBTQI plus in the 70s. But this is when companies started really paying attention to that and providing spaces for, for folks. Now, come up to today, right? Today's workforce, of course, going from that sort of community development to this is good for us to serve, to make better products, to serve our clients well. Diversity helps us be competitive. And so we started with, you know, the Lily Led Better Act and pay equity. That's where equity sort of entered the picture. And now we've fallen back a little bit, right? There's a lot of pushback, particularly in this state against diversity training, right? And what, what all that looks like. And now Gen Z, who is, who's Gen Z here? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, a couple of you. My colleague Kate here is joining us. Um, over 50% of Generation Z is non-white. Black, Indigenous, other people of color. So again, those demographics are changing. Equity inclusion looks different. Okay, so now we're talking about systemic change. And accountability and how do we help everybody feel welcome yes we know how to be welcoming what changes have you seen in the workplace in your time in your career or careers i'd love you to just sort of turn to a couple of people next to you have that discussion for a minute or two and we'll talk changes have you seen can somebody encapsulate from what you talked about in your group come over to this area um we talked about we were just talking about how we work with um like a lot of doctors and um like psychiatry at different fields and um just seeing um kind of like talked about diversity there um we talked about like male versus female <coughs> um It's gone from um, it's, it's like the dress code has become more permissive for women to express themselves. And um, for men, it seems in my personal experience, it's still very, very important. But I see more women in the competition and all women want to have great. Thank you. Thank you. Talk about this area. Kind of discussed how generational 
differences between like um, trust and systems and institutions can have an impact on um, the workforce or who's who's working. And we're there are more guys, more male <coughs> to have it so commonly. Thanks. Anything else different over here? Pretty much the Intentional hiring. Intentional hiring. Well, I've seen human, uh, age range in ages more so, or it does not matter. 25 or 55. Okay. Like, so we'll talk about trying to get away from some of the roles. The earlier guy, like Chuck, is really like heavily hard trying to get away from some of that thinking. And then also, we had a retreat this week about more we spread the word about what we do with not just social work can mean a lot of things or human service work can mean a lot of things so you know, people get ideas in their head and it's not always supported by things you know which direction it's going to be for thank you very much over here anything else yeah thank you very much um i mentioned that dei what like there is actual positions for that now uh -huh. and that's that's a New thing yeah. that I've seen at the store. Yeah, and since 2016, the really and a lot of corporate Americas, they're hiring people specifically to lead those efforts and to to lead inclusion in everything that they do, rather than have it be a separate kind of thing. Yeah, now there's a lot of banning that in some places. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, for sure. Well. Thanks for going through that and thinking about the, the past and where we are now. And I want us to connect to, Kino to culture. I want us to connect to culture. So what does culture mean to you? I see lots of people have notepads. I'd love you to just sort of make a list of the different aspects of culture, like food and food waste, right? So just start making a list of the things that you see are, are pieces of culture. How do we identify culture? And you can do it on the phone. Just think about it. Take a minute. Oh, word of mouth. That's so. <laughs> Let's help each other out. Let's start working out. Out of each other. Go ahead. What's an aspect of culture? I said food, right? Traditions or beliefs. Nice. Hold on one sec. Let me write it down. Keep on. Healthcare. Healthcare. Fashion to be quick. Go ahead. Spending habits. Spending habits. Work ethic. Work ethic. Language or communication. Spiritual beliefs and practices. Now, what else? Family relationships, roles, and marriage. Wow. It's a cold to land. It was awesome. See, that sounds like a class. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like culture and health and culture. I like culture. What else? Dress or attire? Yeah. Is that fashion? Oh, fashion. Footwear. Say that. Say footwear. Ties it. Ties it. Got it. What else? Transgender roles and transgender. Stories, stories and history, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things true, which ties into tradition, but they yeah. pass down. Yeah. Okay, so you'll notice I put them in different places, and typically when I do this, I get a big old list over here. Do you see the difference between the two? Well, let's look at what I call the first layer of culture. Okay, so the things on the left are what fit up here, right? The things that we see. Oh, this is not this thing on. Apparently <laughs> not. Okay. The visible culture, right? The objective stuff. The things that we can see about everybody. 
then you've already started to identify uh, from a different kind of model, right? The iceberg. At the top of the iceberg is that objective culture, the things that we all see that you listed, food and fashion, art, architecture, those physical language. But then you said communication styles, right? And communication styles are going to be that less visible stuff, the subjective culture, where we have to be in community with people to recognize those kind of things. So things like <coughs> the concepts of time, right? Personal space, the way we arrange things, our concepts of beauty and courtesy and politeness and manners and respect, all of that can be really different based on your culture. And so when I talk about culture, I want us to have a really good definition of culture as well. So thinking about all of these things, what's your definition of culture? Just drop one down and we'll, as a group, talk about what we think culture is. What is a definition of culture? All those classes. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. That feels like cheating. We're smarter. Who's got a definition they want to share? Still working on it? It's very oversimplified, but the things you do that make you who you are. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Short and sweet. Another one. Right? Yeah. Stick with it. Yeah. Okay. Are we shy or still figuring it out? Go ahead. All the ways of life, including arts, beliefs, institutions, and the population that have passed down from generation to generation. The way of life for us. Those were both great. And I really like the simple ones, like the way we do things here. This organization has a culture. Yeah, the way we do things here. Or you can think of it as the as patterns, right? Patterns of beliefs behaviors, experiences that dis distinguish one group from another group, right? Which is not just, um, oh, the Zoom session has expired. Oh, oh that's me, Never mind. That's oh my, my person. Oh, it says leave me, I don't want to do that. I'll check and see. I don't know, it said it expires. I don't know, it would say if it stopped recording, right? I was gonna yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, it'll say. Recording is Okay, good, good, good. Think about layers of mental programming, right? These layers of culture. Think about your national culture, right? I'm, as somebody that lives in the US. Think about your religious and or ethnic and or linguistic sort of affiliations. All of those things, those identities, if we're LGBTQIA+, if we're um, racialized as non-white, if, or even if we are racialized as white, if we are, have a low socioeconomic status, or a high socioeconomic status, or our political ideologies, other belief systems, those all inform not just what our culture is, but how we think about culture and how we perceive other cultures. So we all have these layers that are really complex. And you talked about passed down over generations, so it can be kind of unchanging, but Jim Shell, free will, right? Thou shalt or thou shalt not. We all have choices. And our experiences and the people in our lives all inform those choices. So our cultures are evolving and they can't change, right? This is my favorite definition of culture. The way I've been socialized is to see my environment. That's how I think of it. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> That's part of my culture. Did you grow up making paper airplanes? Yeah. And then when my kids, when I had kids, we got these books that showed how to make them in all these really intricate ways. Um, so I recognize that that is cultural. Right? That's not a deep conceptual thing, but it's something that we did together. Um, when I think about my culture, it's kind of hard being a fish in water. When I say that, you know, you know the old sort of Hebrew proverb about, or not proverb, what do you call it? Saying the fish is the last one to know what water is, right? So when I'm part of the dominant culture, and I'm, when I say that, when I think in dimensions of culture, I'm thinking in dimensions of identity, 
I'm white, I'm straight, I'm cisgender, I'm Christian, I'm English speaking, all of those things. That's the majority culture right now in this country. And it's also sort of those dimensions of power. And we think about equity. I make my way in the world differently than other people do based on my identities or I'm received differently than people who don't have those dominant aspects of their identity. So cultural humility is recognizing not just other cultures, but my own and recognizing behaviors as culturally influenced. So did you ever have somebody, um, actually, I want to read this to you. Give me a second. All those things are attributes of it, but I'm going to read this definition. Cultural humility involves an ongoing process of self-exploration and self-critique, combined with a willingness to learn from others. It means entering a relationship with another person, ascribing them good intentions, and having the intention ourselves of honoring our beliefs, customs, and values. It means acknowledging differences and not ignoring them and accepting that person for who they are. So if you ever met somebody, you first met them and ooh, you didn't really like them. It's like, well, I don't think we're gonna be friends. I don't think we're gonna be weird. Mm. And then you spend more time with them. You're like, oh, well, yeah, that thing's so weird, but I do like this kind of thing. Or, oh my gosh, now I know why they act like that. Oh, well, it doesn't bother me so much. Oh, that's there's a reason for it, right? So deep in that complexity of understanding of other people, we have a lot more empathy, and we give them a lot more real grace, right? And so that is how it works with cultural differences, right? Because it comes down to personality, personal preference, of course, but any kind of difference that's new to us, at first, it's, it's pretty awkward, right? And when we stay in those spaces where we just get along based on all the ways that we're alike, we can miss the opportunities to be inclusive. So DEI connected with cultural humility, right? A really good understanding of my own culture and being, being able to see other things as culture, right? Not just this thing that why are they doing that to me? Why are they talking to me like what do they mean by it? Leading with, with curiosity, right? And spreading good intentions. Oh, look, <laughs> that wasn't a paper airplane. What was that? It was an origami bird, right? So if I think about Japan, I just saw this great thing on Instagram this morning. And it, I don't know what the baseball thing was, but it was in Japan. And somebody hit a home run and this woman got the ball. And then somebody next to her wanted to look at it. So she let them look at it. It got passed around the entire stadium. People were taking pictures on their phone. Oh, and she got it back. And that's Japan for you. <laughs> yes. So think of how what would happen here in this country. And I have another example for Japan. I, I, yeah, I've always loved Japan. Um, some Western advertising firm was doing a stop smoking in Japan, sort of. PR thing, right? So they did it from the Western perspective of, you know, back to your health, it's not the environment, da, da, da. and so they were testing it out. It was, it was failing miserably because they didn't understand that the concept of self for Japanese people is not about that sort of rugged individualistic American way. It is tied to relationships. So when they approached it from, you'll be a better coworker, you'll be a better child to your parents, parent to your children, siblings to your siblings, then that became successful because, again, the concept of self is so very different. And origami is such a wonderful metaphor for Japanese, beginning with the end in mind, revering the ancestors, and just being really focused on the end creation, right? You, you keep nodding, you know a lot about Japan or is it I, Japan? Yeah, I lived there when I was really young. So, oh, nice. Yeah, so culture shock in reverse. Yeah. I forgot the States and then had to come from Japan back to the States when I was five. Yeah. So, so big fan. Can't wait to go back. Yeah. Yeah. And when I think about that, like if I studied to Japan for a year, and I really love that collectivism. Right, and it really is about achieving together, and not who gets the credit, any of that. And I'm like, why can't we be like that here? Japan is so much better. But for women in Japan, mm -hmm. the sexism is much worse than it is here in this country. So when I'm preferring this other thing, I don't have that again, that full understanding, that complexity of understanding 
And what I'm saying, mine's not as good. There's more, there's good and bad in, in, in both, right? So why are we here? You've heard about the intercultural development inventory. Please share with me what you know about it, what you're about to embark on. It's always about self-awareness, but also improving self-awareness to improve awareness. Yeah. How we respond to things, self-reflecting. Yeah. And the end result is that belonging, right? And accessibility. So people can value, value heard, understood, all of that. And that we're benefiting not just each other, but the people that serve. <laughs> Are you familiar with form, storm, norm, perform? So that's when a group gets together to do a project or a group gets together to do common work. And so the forming is just coming together and you can have people that are pretty homogeneous or heterogeneous, right? So alike and different. And when you have groups that are well-managed, right? Homogeneous teams, they go through that storm part to the norming really quickly and performing because they don't have a lot to hold them back or discuss or figure out. They're kind of all on the same page to start with. Not completely, right? We're individuals. But when you have a really heterogeneous team, right? People are really different, have different backgrounds, have different needs, have different ways of feeling and heard, valued and understood. That storming takes a lot longer. They've got to figure each other out. You've got to figure out how to respect people or respect each other. You've got to learn each other, right? To honor each other. That takes a lot longer and to get to those norms. So you go really quickly, right? And then you get to wherever you perform as, a, as an alike team, well-managed. You take a lot longer storming and norming, right? And the other team, but outperform in almost any, any study the team that's very much alike. So those diverse perspectives, if you're able to sort of come together and get to that norming and performing, you're gonna do better. So when we stay where we're pretty much alike and we don't talk about our differences because it's uncomfortable and I'm golden rule following, I'm gonna treat other people the way I wanna be treated. Let me tell you, as a teacher, I thought when I first started teaching, I will treat my students the way I want my own kids to be treated. We will be golden. Yeah, I see some, they didn't necessarily want to be treated the way they wanted to be treated. Those families didn't want to be necessarily be treated the way I wanted to be treated as a parent. It was very different. It was a lot of learning. So it was my responsibility to learn how to love them, love my neighbor, and their responsibility to teach them, and vice versa. So that's the storming part, right, where we learn to love and honor and respect. This is a roadmap. When everybody does IDI, this is where we'll see our results. And that's really kind of all you need to know about this right now. When we come back together and look at those aggregate results, we're going to look at them in terms of this continuum, get a really good understanding of it. But again, that's all you really need to know about it right now. Yeah, I see some people jot down notes. Did you get them all? Okay. So how do we do this thing? You're gonna get an email that says, here's how you, here's your credentials. Go to this site, log in. You'll complete the inventory. And then you'll have the group data. And then you have the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one to look at your own individual results. When we do the group data, that'll be a, a big meeting like this where we look at it all together again, learn about that continuum and what it means for us and have some ongoing support. So how do we complete it? What's it gonna ask me? I want to. Help you get prepared for it because it has some instructions that for some people are like what and it gets them bogged down in overthinking right so it will ask you think of your own culture and one other culture that you have the most experience with well if i was in japan for a long time that's probably the other culture that i'm going to think about most when i'm talking about other cultures and then my own culture again so many of us are just swimming in that water and don't know what wet is Try not to get bogged down in that. It's just who I am, people like me, the way I was raised, the way we do things here. And then if I don't have another culture that I have a lot of experience with and it asks about other cultures, just think in general. Don't let it hold you up. You wanna be authentic, but again, you don't wanna overthink or worry or 
anything about it. Just response. So there are 50 items. They're all a bunch of statements. Oh, I should stop. That makes sense. Because the instructions are going to say, think of one, your own, and one other culture. But that's only, again, if you have a lot of experience with a different culture. But that could be if I have a bunch of Hispanic people in my family, right? I want to think of Spanish language culture. Or if I have a bunch of um, Mennonites in my family, right? Whatever it is, if I have a lot of experience or a lot of friends that are black, African American cultures, but only there, right? You have a, a bunch of those. Make sense? Yeah. So think of think about the statements, and I'll show you an example of the statements actually. So there are fifty of them. Take you about I usually say twenty minutes, but it's more like ten or fifteen minutes, and because you don't want to just overthink, you can stop and start. But think about the statements as if somebody said that, not that you're saying it. And then how much you agree or disagree. So that's that lack of skills. So something like our culture's way of life should be a model for the rest of the world. Our culture means your culture, not American culture or Midwest, unless that's your culture, right? Our culture means mine. If I heard somebody say that to me, our culture's way of life should be a model for the rest of the world, I might think, yeah. We'd be a lot better off, right? So I agree. I don't know strong, but I do agree. And then our common humanity deserves more attention than cultural differences. Well, I guess I never really thought about that. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I don't agree or disagree. So I think that. Yeah. Just again, as if somebody said that, how do you feel about it? Make sense? Again, you don't get to pick, it depends, right? So just your best answer based on your experience. Any questions about that? What happens after I complete the inventory? Again, it'll be aggregate results. No individual results are given to anybody but the individual person that they belong to, but we'll look at a group report. And we will, again, look at it together start learning about the continuum, what it means for the group and the way we operate together, the way we serve our families, the way we serve our clients, our communities. Forgive me, I forget who you call your folks clients. Members. Members, and how you serve your members and their families. Yeah. And then if you want, no one will be forced to do a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's there for you. And I have to tell you that for most people, oops, I'm gonna skip to this. For most people, they find it really motivating. It's in, in an environment where you're just with one other um, qualified administrator, that could be me or one of our other members of our team. So confidential, but not private, right? Not not anonymous. But no one's gonna look at your results unless you want to look at them, right? And you would look at an advisor. Again, folks find it really informative and really motivating and really cool. So that's after the group briefing, but let's go back and see if I missed anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, itself. It's valid in 17 languages, so if you have more comfort in a language other than English, you can take it in Arabic or Spanish or Cambodian or Mandarin or other 17 of them. Okay, so that applies to you. Um, if you want to know more about it before you do the thing, go to IEIMGO.com. Okay, again, we want, to, we want to take this and we're going to do like a road mapping thing where we look at how do we do what we've already done because there's been really great extensive work that you've done here. How do we now use this, this information and make a roadmap? What do we want to do short-term, long-term to fit in with the rest of our goals? And again, we'll have that group debrief. We'll probably be split up a little bit again like this in a couple of halves and we'll go through it and it'll be actually super fun, which I don't know, it really is fun to look at it and think about it and some of the activities that we get to do are, are yeah, fun. What? Oh, how are you doing? What are you thinking? What do you know? What do you wonder? What do you want? <laughs> so just pick one, think about it, and I'll ask everybody to share. You can always pass, of course. But let's just do a quick reflection and share. I wonder if you'll split the group results of a program. It's supposed to just the entire agency. 
for other guests. Whatever you're wondering, I will wait until everybody goes and then I'll answer the questions. Who else? Also, I want you to cook in a speech for a mom. Maybe work that out. <laughs> yeah, let's just start over here and we'll go back around too, because I don't think it'll take longer for volunteering. But again, you can ask. Um, I want you to present some of the provider agencies. Um, I just think it's exciting and um, I'm interested in reading the book. Um, I want to be motivated and also um, want to share with like family or other agencies as well. And I want to have a couple of the Thank you. I want to learn about everyone in the journal and about something that I don't know. I, I wonder what my mom and my uncle would do with this. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Let's go to the back. I think this is cool. I want to know more about it. I think this will be different from other ones I've done before. Um, I think this will be a very learning experience. Uh, <clears throat> I want to continue this conversation deeper. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering what my results would say about me and like how I feel about everything. Um, and it would be interesting to see what some of my family members would think yeah. their results would be as well. <laughs> Um, I think that the results will be really interesting. I don't know what they are. Um, I think that everybody should do it. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what now? I want to answer any other questions, and then I'll tell you how we'll go about. Any questions? So if we're gonna split it programmatically, that was a, one, of, one of the wonderings, we can do that. What we do is, again, an aggregate report. What we don't do is, if it's like a small group, give that to anybody, even leadership, because it's like, okay, here's this program, there's four people in it, and this person's here, and this person's here, and this, but it, you're gonna to try to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's too small, we'll give the, sort of the, which one is the average? The median, so it's still confidential. But yes, we can break it up any any way we want to. Other questions? Okay, next steps. So I'll meet with the other group on Monday, and in a couple of weeks, you're going to see an email from IDI admin. But I'll send you an email first, so we get one from me that says all that stuff. You'll click on the link to the survey. You go ahead and fill out your inventory it has your unique credentials all of that and then once everybody gets done um, forgive me i forgot my card do you know the dates for the we already have a date for the group debriefing forgive me i don't have it but i can follow up and make sure you do have it so we'll do the group debriefing a little bit ahead of that we can go ahead and start scheduling the one-on-ones because you can do your one-on-one -on -one as soon as we finish the group debriefing so we don't have to wait to schedule those yeah would you like email done by It'll be in there. It'll say, "Please complete this by." You'll have you'll have like a week and a half or something, not too long, so that you forget to do it or put it off, right? Um, but not a couple days. Yeah, I apologize. I was going to grab the card that has our dates on it. And I didn't. I didn't capture electronically. Important. Easily accessible, right? Other questions. You love me because I'm gonna let you out early. <laughs> We're not done. We have yeah. three hours. <laughs> you get a longer break, right? <laughs> Final comments from me. Again, I am so appreciative of the journey that you're on and you have been on, and that I get to be a part of this this piece of it. And I'm really excited about it. I, I hope that I get to do one on one with a lot of you, and that you'll really, really enjoy this part of the journey. I'll see you again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, that's right. They cover that ground. Some of those are 30. Some of those are 30. Tell me, thank you. 